Hello, I'm Eric Roby. And I'm Tracy Reynolds, and this is Anne Arundel County Week in Review. Today we'll get a preview of the summer's crab harvest and Alistair the cat finds a new home. But first, making headlines this week, it was the kiss heard round the world. We were going to tell you about singer Katy Perry's visit to the Naval Academy because that's just cool enough, but then her kiss of a midshipman on stage made even bigger news. Yes, she performed all of her hit songs and delighted the crowd with her singing, but it was her singling out of one lucky fan that got everyone's attention. Let's take a look. And we ran this through our review board, and by the way, it was rated PG. Well, I'm glad it was rated PG. <laughs> Would you still be all right with that? <laughs> you know that iconic pose? You know when they're all getting off the ship? You ready? A little risque, I admit, but it was kind of cute. By the way, the pose was, of course, modeled after the famous 1945 Times Square photograph of a nurse kissing a sailor who was returning home from war. Nicholas Tanner Beasley, the lucky guy in the video, really had his 10 minutes of fame. He even Skyped in an interview with Entertainment Tonight. The video of him smooching Perry has gone viral. Now get back to class, Mr. Beasley. Well, Tracy, I got to tell you, that's a great story, but it's quite a different story from what happened when Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton came to the Academy just a couple of weeks ago. And you know what, folks? It's probably a good thing. We have a new face here on Week in Review this week. It's Kelsey McConkie. She's joined our Office of Community and Constituent Services, and she's filed her first report from Cantlers in St. Margaret's. They have the latest on the crabbing season ahead. Kelsey. Hi, this is Kelsey McConkie with Week in Review. I'm here with Thomas at Cantlers, and we're going to talk about the crabs this season. So we've been hearing that the crab population has increased. Um, can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, due to the winter time being not as cold, the crabs didn't burrow down into the mud, which means that they've been just sitting there and they've been, you know, having more of a population coming in. So this year we should have a lot more of a population, and that should hopefully lower the market down. Can you give us an estimate of what you think the market value of crabs will be this year? Last year, at the beginning of the season, it was about 150 bucks for ones. So this year, hopefully with a lot of population, we should be able to lower them to about 100, maybe 90. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Kelsey. Not a bad assignment for your first interview. Going out on the water on a beautiful day, can't think of anything better. Maybe, it sh maybe I should be a correspondent next time. And go down to Candler's, have a few crabs, enjoy the water. Sounds but you know like what? Idea. Tracy Reynolds is back, folks. Back, back, back after about, what, a year? You've been uh, away from the show? Yeah, yeah well, a little you know over what? a year. Every time you come back, I try to stump you. Is it a mascot match game or something <laughs> like that? Well, guess what I got today? Since we just heard a report from Kelsey on crabs, I got a little crab contest for you. Got okay. some crab questions for you. Okay. Now, these are questions that normally kids get answered. So let's okay, see so if Tracy's as that smart in there. as a fourth grader. Not a third grader, but a fourth All grader, right. folks. All right, how many species of crabs are there? We know about the blue crab, we know about the dungeon crab, we know about hermit Dungeness crabs. Dungeness crab. Dungeness crab. That's dungeon it. crab. That's probably dungeon there's crabs what, too. There's hermit crabs and sand crabs and blue yep. crabs and spider crabs, yep. king crabs. Yeah. How many do you crabs. think? How many species? Clock's ticking here, Trace. Come on. Um, hundreds. 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 Try thousands. Thousands. Six thousand. 6,793 species of crabs. Wow. Can you believe that? That's, That's a, a lot. lot of crabs crawling That's around. A lot on of the crustacean. Floor. <laughs> all right, all right, good, good answer there. Now, how about the size of some of these crabs? We saw in the video we had, uh, you know, from the report out in the field, some big crabs coming in early in the season. But what do you think the biggest crab is, and how big do you think that crab is? Blue crabs, at the most, they're between maybe nine. You can make it some that are like 10 inches point to point. Really? So the biggest crabs. Ten, ten. Yeah, point to point. Say That's probably the largest. Feet. Two feet. Mm -hmm. 13 feet. There's a Japanese crab out what? there. A Japanese spider crab. 13 feet. Can you imagine a crab that size? It would look like a oh, sea monster out right. there. Right. It's like so, a, a stingray or something. 13 <laughs> feet. 
And everybody out there knows that Tracy loves to go out and have some good seafood at some local mm -hmm. restaurants. So how many pounds of crab, blue crab, do you think are eaten every year in the United States? In the United States? In the United States. Wow. Um, how many pounds of crab? Hundreds of thousands of over one million pounds of one crab. One million pounds is of eaten crab. Every wow. year in the United States. So some interesting facts as that we move into the spring season and the crabs become plentiful out there, folks. Well, they kind of got more bad news from the State Board of Education this week when its appeal was denied in a ruling that the county did not provide enough funding for education last year. The State Board said the county could not count interest payments for school construction projects when calculating its appropriation to the county board. The result is that the county executive and the county council will have to find another $12 million from elsewhere in the budget to make up the difference. County Executive Leopold said he was disappointed but not surprised by the ruling. Chief Administrative Officer John Hammond will present some options to the council next week, and Leopold said he is confident the issue will be resolved. He also said he disagrees with the state's ruling and that the extra money is for pay raises the school, system, the school system should not have approved. Wages for county employees have been frozen for a fourth straight year in this budget, including two years of furloughs scheduled to end in this upcoming year. Well, folks, there's more we can view to come. Stay with us because, of course, we'll be right back after the break. Six stairs takes determination. So will getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. And welcome back, folks. Well, you never know who's going to stop by the studio, and it's a perfect opportunity since Justin Mulcahy in our police beat is on a well-deserved break this week. We've got the new acting captain, Herb Hotson push from the Emergency Operations Center. Herb, thanks for joining us on the show. You're welcome. Thanks for having me here. Welcome to your new position. I know it's uh, that. a lot of responsibilities, emergency management. We always talk about uh, on the show storms, and we're just coming out of the winter months. The weather's starting to turn a lot warmer out there, and folks aren't thinking about snowstorms anymore, even though they had a big snow out in Garrett County, I think, last week. We did. There was a, a winter weather advisory in Garrett County this past week, if you can imagine that. That's unbelievable. April, and we got snow out there, folks. But let's start turning our attention now to the spring, because we get sure. a lot of springtime weather in this area. I heard a report a couple weeks ago that Maryland had made the top 10 list of states for tornadic activity. And you wouldn't think about that. You normally think about tornadic activity in the Midwest being Tornado Alley and all that. But in Maryland and, and this mid-Atlantic area, we do have our fair share of tornadoes. And what can folks do out there? I mean, you, we, we talk about during the winter months, you know, be prepared to be stuck indoors 24, 48 hours if it's a major snowstorm in the, in the mid-Atlantic region or here in Maryland. Um, but for, for these tornadoes, they're unpredictable. These thunderstorms and tornadoes, very unpredictable. Yeah, unlike hurricanes and winter storms where we can watch them coming and we can prepare a little bit ahead of time for that, these uh, tornadoes and severe uh, summer weather with th uh, thunderstorms are uh, really unpredictable. Um, and the most important thing is to have some, some method so that you can find out about them, either through NOAA weather radio. There's a lot of app apps available for uh, mobile devices that will alert you um, when they kick out a, a weather advisory. Um, of course, you need to stay tuned to your television stations and radio stations. And, and don't change the channel if you hear that beep, beep, beep coming through. Uh, it could be actually a very important uh, message that you might need to take some shelter and um, be prepared for the storm. Absolutely. Well, we know that uh, we've got an emergency operations center and emergency management staff that's now in competent hands, as it was with Captain Hodge and Captain Wilson when they were over there. Uh, but tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. I know you've been with the department for about 18 years, and uh, this is a new assignment for you. But... You know, it just happens. You, you, you move around a lot in the police department. You do. Um, this is a new assignment for me. I've got uh, d 
going into my 18th year with the county police. I've got 23 years of law enforcement uh, experience here in Maryland. And I have some other background too. I've had some background in the fire service. I'm actually a nationally uh, certified, Maryland certified fire officer too, mm -hmm. and uh, maintain my EMT certification. And I also recently uh, completed the uh, FEMA's Emergency Management Institute's uh, professional development series. Uh, to prepare for this assignment. Mm -hmm. Now we just, uh, I understand in, in talking to you off camera and in uh, discussions with uh, Captain Hodge, we just finished our hazard mitigation plan here for the county and submitted that to the state. What does that mean for residents in the county? How does that impact them? We did. We just updated our hazard uh, mitigation plan and that was approved by FEMA. And what that means for us is that allows the county to obtain uh, financial resources through the federal government through MEMA, which is the state agency, through FEMA which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And what that does is it, we have a plan to mitigate disasters. In other words, um, to make things a little bit better than they might be uh, if, if we don't take some pre-planning actions. And the other good thing is, for example, with IREM, we um, did receive some reimbursement money from the federal government because we did have a, a mitigation plan. Mm -hmm. And what that mitigation plan allowed us to do was where, for example, where roads were washed away. We had some of that across the county. County roads were washed away from the heavy flooding, we were able to rebuild those roads but make them better, stronger, more elevated to mitigate future storms that of similar uh, magnitude. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly hope we don't have any storms of those magnitude, but we're glad that we've got a gentleman like you in charge of our Emergency Operations Center. I know you've got a good staff over there that does, uh, does a wonderful job, and we certainly appreciate that. Thank you very much. We're very, very glad to be here. Captain, thanks for coming on the show. Folks, well, last week we told you about Alistair the Cat. Alistair was still in need of a home despite his superstar debut on Week in Review, and we implored all of our viewers out there to spread the word about this friendly feline. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you that it paid off. One of our friends on Facebook stepped forward and took Alistair in. So we want to thank everyone who promoted our friendly little cat here on the show. And folks, of course, we'll continue to promote the great dogs, cats, snakes, rabbits, and any other critter that may be finding its way into animal control right here on Week in Review. But you can also see for yourself by liking Animal Control on Facebook or following our regular updates. And don't forget the adopt a pet coming up next month. Mark Chang once again was out pounding the pavement in Glen Burnie, and this week he's talking about distracted driving. Mark? Thanks to both of you in the studio. I'm over here in downtown Glen Burnie, and with me today I have Delegate Pam Bidel. We're over at her insurance agency, and she's going to talk about an upcoming community program that her and her insurance practice are going to be hosting specifically to help young drivers out and driving safely. Pam, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show and known you for many years as a delegate, as a legislator, as a uh, insurance professional, and also as a mom. And I know you care so much about the uh, safety of young folks out there. Could you tell us specifically uh, about the uh, upcoming event that you have for young drivers? I will, and thank you for having me on the show, Mark. We are hosting a texting simulator day, so we're gonna have a vehicle with a texting simulator at North County High School on Saturday, May 5th, and it'll be an opportunity for about 300 students to attempt to drive while texting, and they can check their responses and see how they do. Um, it, we're sponsoring the vehicle. We'll be, have food all day and raffles and giveaways, so we're hoping to see 300 students come out that day. Well, that's really awesome, Pam. And why are you and your insurance associates so, um, why, what's the, why is it so important to you all? Well, it's, it's, I don't think young people realize the number of accidents that are caused every year with distracted driving. You know, a, a large number of accidents that happen for um, people under the age of 21 are, are due to distracted driving. And there's over 11,000 deaths a year based on just distracted driving. So I think it's really important for them to see how important their driving habits are to safety. Okay, great. And you touched upon this a little bit earlier. Uh, how many students can participate in the program? Um, about 300 from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, great. And what will the students, uh, what can they expect with the simulator? Um, they can, they'll be having to bring their cell phone. They will wear a simu the simulator like a, a hat, you know, like a helmet. And um, as they attempt to drive, it will test their reflexes. And they'll be surprised. For instance, um, in the time it takes to read a text, you've crossed a football field and probably crossed the, the yellow line. Or um, you could actually have the impact of maybe hitting a person or hitting a mailbox. Or Because it you know, will be a simulator like a game almost, but, but it really is to test the reflexes. Great. And, and in addition to helping the students out with this simulator, how will the high schools benefit from this? The high schools will benefit, um, hopefully, if, if 
parents come with the children and agree to allow us to give them um, an automobile insurance quote at a later date, we will um, provide $5 donation for every family that does that. And the schools can use that at, the, at their discretion. So we know we have like some of the bands interested, the ball teams that, you know, will come and they would like to have the extra resources. Right, so absolutely. we're contributing $5. Okay, great. Is there anything else planned for the event? Um, we are, you know, we'll have food all day, we'll have giveaways, um, the raffles are for a Kindle Fire and a digital camera, and um, we're going to try to get some other vendors there. Um, we're hoping to get, you know, maybe Chick-fil-A and Brewsters and some other giveaways, but to make it a fun day for the kids. Okay, well that sounds really awesome. Uh, it's a jam-packed event. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Well, I just really hope, I, I know it's really tough to get young people out on a Saturday, but I really hope they'll take advantage of this because um, they really need to really take the time to realize what texting and driving and how dangerous it is. So. Okay, great. And a contact phone number, website, email address? Um, probably the easiest is our website, uh, www.vitalinsurance.com, or our Facebook page is the same Facebook as uh, vitalinsurance.com. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Pam. Thank you. Well, uh, reporting from downtown Glen Burnie with Delegate Pam Bidel for Anne Arundel County Weekend Review. Back to you in the studio. Oh, so we're back. Thanks, Mark. They said not to check Facebook while driving, but nobody said you can't do it while you're hosting the show. This week, Mary Felter has a preview of a symposium on elder law coming to Anne Arundel County Community College. Time to get out those law books. Mary? Thank you. Today my guest is Melanie Murray Mfumi. She's an attorney in Maryland and Washington, D.C. She's going to talk with us today about a symposium that is being sponsored by the Maryland State Bar Association's Leadership Academy. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Mary. Very happy to be here. I asked you to come so you could talk about navigating the elder care maze. This symposium is set for Saturday, May 19th from 8.30 to 3 p.m. at the Pascal Center for Performing Arts at Anne Arundel Community College. It is open to the public, yes. but of course we want people to make reservations. And it's a joint effort of the college's Legal Studies Institute and the Maryland State Bar Association's Leadership Academy. Yes. So I thought perhaps you could tell us first, what is the Leadership Academy House and set up? Sure. Uh, Leadership Academy is a program for young attorneys that was established by the Maryland State Bar Association. Uh, and they've actually recently just celebrated their 15th anniversary. Yeah. Um, so various young attorneys will apply. Um, up to 15 um, applicants are accepted each year and they will go on to become fellows. Uh, and then throughout the year, attorneys are exposed to various um, opportunities. It's a fabulous networking opportunity. And then the goal of the program is to come up with a public service um, project that's going to be free to the community. And this year we have chosen to identify um, elder law issues. I understand the Academy uh, is in the past, they did one on foster youth to help them gain skills so when they age out of the foster care system they would have some skills so they could get employment. And then I also saw there was one called Stories from My Father, which was um, a project where fathers in a local prison read stories to their children so that they would have something uh, later. So this year you're doing the seniors, and why are you doing the seniors? There is, uh, we feel that the senior community is such a vulnerable population and there's so much um, information and new issues that this community is facing. Uh, it's, it's people who are ca caring for the elderly as well as people who are planning for their own future. So we just want to compile um, a list of really knowledgeable, experienced attorneys, um, offer the information to the public so that we can educate and hopefully rule out anyone getting scammed or taken advantage of. Yeah, the scamming is most difficult nowadays. Um, Tell me about how is the day set up. You've got Gloria Lalo, the Secretary of the Department of Aging for Maryland speaking, and sure. what else is happening? We will have um, registration between 8.30 and 9. Uh, then at 9.10, Secretary Lala from the Maryland Department of Aging will give the welcome and the opening remarks. Uh, then we will have Attorney Ed Krill, who's gonna talk to us about powers of attorney and why they are such a valuable document, particularly when we're dealing with senior issues. Um, then we're gonna have the remainder of the day broken out into four sessions. So session one will run from 10 a.m to 11 a.m. Uh, and it will cover estate planning, asset management, and we will have um, in, uh, Ann Jacobin and Steve Witte uh, to speak during that session. Uh, session two will run from um, 11 a.m. to noon, and that will cover cost of care. And we will have Jason mm -hmm. Frank, uh, Ron Landsman, and Scott, Allison, Scott Allen Morrison speaking um, during that hour. Then we will have uh, lunch from noon to 1 p.m. Lunch will be provided uh, for free to the participants, Good. and we will have uh, keynote remarks from Jason Frank. Um, the third hour will run from 1 to 2 p.m. We'll cover elder abuse prevention, um, and that will be presented by 
by Karen Pope Unwukwi, as well as Bill Groon, who works at the Office of the Attorney General. And then our final hour will run from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, this is where we will have um, volunteer attorneys on site that will, participants will be able to sit down, have a consultation to talk about the elder law issues. They can have uh, the statutory powers of attorneys prepared. Oh. Um, they can also have advanced medical directives uh, prepared. There's also going to be a physical presentations. We'll have um, a yoga workshop um, as well oh. as um, a self-defense um, presentation. Um, the only caveat I would say for that hour is that only only participants that pre-register will be guaranteed a consultation. Um, we will, of course, try our best to accommodate um, the individuals that are participating that didn't register, but they will, of course, have to wait. Then let's tell our people how you register. What do you sure. do to get to be one of the people that's going to have one of the consultations? Absolutely. Um, so we have tried to make this very uh, fast and convenient. We have three ways we can register. Um, you can go to the website, www.elderlaw2012.com, and there will be prompts on the website that you can follow. Mm -hmm. um, or you can email um, elderlaw2012 at gmail.com. Um, or you can call 443-837-7932. We'll run those numbers on the bottom of our screen here so people can see them. Okay. And it's free. The whole day is free. Absolutely. I think it's wonderful that the, the attorneys are going to get together to do this. Um, and you're one of the fellows this year, right, for the Leadership Academy? Mm -hmm. It's been my pleasure to have you come on the program today and let people know about this event. And we look forward to having people at the event. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. This is Mary Felter from Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities, and this is Anne Arundel County Week in Review. Back to you. Thank you, Mary. This sounds like a very useful event because estate planning and getting your legal affairs in order is very important. Well, while we're slaving away here in the studio, Tracy, of course, checking Facebook on her phone, our community correspondents really do have the life. Whether it's Kelsey relaxing at Cantler's on a sunny afternoon or Franklin Cheney out playing golf. That's this week's Recreation and Park Spotlight. Franklin talks to Mike Seneca about spring events at Compass Point and Eisenhower Golf Course. Franklin. Thank you. I'm here today with in Pasadena, Maryland with Michael Seneca, General Manager of Compass Point Golf Course and Eisenhower Golf Course. Michael, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Franklin. We're here on the practice green at Compass Point. First of all, Mike, tell us about Compass Point Golf Course. Sure. Compass Point Golf Course is 36 holes of championship golf, conveniently located off of Route 100 in Pasadena. A lot of great program that we have going on. Uh, you know, we have web specials throughout the week, junior camps, lessons, all kinds of great memberships at, uh, at both clubs. So uh, everybody better come out and see us. Now, it's, I, I love going on your website. Why don't you first of all tell our viewers about the website? Sure. CompassPointGolf.com. Just make sure there's an E at the end of point. Uh, you'll find information about all of our membership programs. One of the nice things new for uh, this year is you can actually pay monthly for those. Great player development slash range program that we have. You'll find web specials. You'll find different tournaments and events that we're doing, as well as junior camps and uh, adult lessons. You know, one of my favorite things to do is you can also si actually sign up for your tee time on the website as well. Yes, it's extremely convenient. You can sign up via the website for a tee time for Compass Point and Eisenhower 24 hours a day. Or if you do want to make a phone call, you could call 410-255-7764 24 hours a day and make a tee time. All right, now Mike, talk a little bit about Compass Point. You said 36 holes here. Give us kind of an overview, like if you were to come out and play this course, what this course is like to play. Sure. You know, one of the one of the unique things about Compass Point is our, our, our North Nine is more of a link style layout, so something a little bit different for this area. Then, as well as when you get to the West Nine, you have more of a shot makers target type golf course. So it's it's a mixture of uh, of uh, different types of golf courses. Now, our sister course at Eisenhower, 18 holes on Generals Highway in Annapolis. Tell us about that one. Sure, 18 hole, par 71 golf course, uh, beautiful layout. It's, um, you know, it, it's it's a fun golf course to play. You know, I've been playing it for years and, you know, and always enjoy it. All right, well, Mike, we appreciate you being on the show today. Eisenhower and Compass Point are two great Anne Arundel County courses. Go on the website, check them out. For Franklin Cheney for Week in Review, back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Franklin. This week, County Executive Leopold announced a new partnership with Fort Meade that offers deep discounts for personnel at the Post. 
including those on active duty. To celebrate the agreement, the county executive is offering free, that's right, free golf at Compass Point on May 1st for Fort Meade employees and residents, and another free day on May 8th at Eisenhower. You have to call to book a tee time and present your Department of Defense ID to get a free round of golf. So hurry up and make sure you book that spot for golf, Tracy. I know. Yeah. You know I love Compass Point. I know you do. Compass Point's a great place. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's been a interesting spring. Mm. Some really hot weather at right. the beginning and Early. then some really, really cold weather towards and the end. Dry. And dry. We've had a little bit of a dry spring this year. Yeah. But, um... I think we have rain in the forecast this weekend and maybe next week, so that'll be good. So, any big plans? Big plans. For to your find weekend. Big, uh, you know what? I'm doing a, uh, I'm not running in a, we're going out to Frederick next weekend. Be out to, I'm going to come and take the show for Friday, of course, but okay. uh, my wife is doing a half marathon. It's going to be our first half marathon. Oh, she's, good for uh, her. she's running in and out in the wonderful city of Frederick, and the kids, the kids are doing a quarter mile. They've got a kids' fun run that they're going to oh, do out that's there. Great. And, I'm just going to do the 5K because that's about my speed. 5Ks are good for me. Yeah, well, good for you. Well, It'll next weekend, since I might not be here next week, so I'll let you know what my plans are for next weekend because yes. actually this is a really Listen great up. event. It's a great event. Um, I'm going to the Therapeutic Riding Center. They have their um, Derby Garden Day. and it's a Are you wearing a hat? Yeah. You're going to wear the Derby hat? Well, I'm going to wear a hat that I'm going to try to, you know, they have oh. a hat contest. Oh, are so you, you entering the hat contest? I'm hoping so. Oh, Chuck, make sure we get some pictures <laughs> of those hats contests. We can put that in the blooper reel. Here but I think the, the tickets are still available. They're $100 um, a ticket, and okay. it's a great cause. And it's a fun day. They'll actually watch the Kentucky Derby live hmm. when it when it comes on. And so um, if anyone's interested, they should contact the Therapeutic Running School out in Crownsville. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right, folks, well, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archive episodes are available at blip.tv and on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the free, yet free, video podcast at iTunes or like us on Facebook at a Rumble TV. Please tune in again with us next week for more news and highlights from around your county. We'll see you next time.